Hey everyone, so welcome to this week's episode of Roto's Questions. And this week I want to talk about something that's very important as you know a lot of this has been going on lately. And it's really changing our world, changing my country, probably changing your country wherever you are, and it's false flag attacks. You know, so I want to talk about what is a false flag attack and why would a government carry out a false flag on its own people. You know, so I just want to talk about where quickly where the term false flag comes from. And, you know, as far as I know, it comes from back in the days of pirates, you know, because pirates would fly flags on their ships. You know, we all know the pirate flag, the skull and crossbones. You know, so what pirates would do is when they would see other ships, they would fly a different flag. You know, they would fly a friendly flag to that ship. So say they would fly Canada's flag, you know, and then the other ship would see, oh, hey, it's just the Canadians over there. So we, we got nothing to worry about. And then once that other ship is within firing, firing range, the pirates would lower the Canadian flag and fly their own and then boom, attack the unprepared ship, you know, the unguarded ship that thought it was just the friendly Canadians approaching. You know, so it's a very smart ruse. It's one way to just get, get the one up on the enemy, get the first hit in. You know, and the same tactic could also be used by them and they, by just not even lowering the Canadian flag, keeping the Canadian flag up the whole time and not saying that they are pirates and then in the end the other ship once they're killed or if there's any survivors they'll go back home and be like the Canadians attacked us so then you get home and they're like oh we gotta go to war with Canada now and all the while the pirates are off somewhere else laughing and drinking and you know just thinking about this war that just started and they're just Alright, so you know, obviously in modern times, there's no more flags being used on the ships and stuff, but it's, just, it's the same ruse, you know, the game is still the same. You know, when an organization attacks another, they make it look like it was done by a third party, and then they just sit back and watch these other two parties attack each other, destroy each other, bomb each other, kill each other, and they're just sitting back and laughing. You know, so there's many examples in history of this happening. I mean, if you want to look up Operation Northwoods, a very well-known example that actually never happened. It was all planned out by intelligence agencies in the U.S. They had the whole plan to hijack civilian planes, it sounds kind of familiar, right? Plant bombs in American territory and then blame it on Cuban terrorists. You know, the plan was developed in order to garner support to invade Cuba. And the plan would have went ahead if it wasn't rejected by JFK. You know, so another one that's probably one of the biggest false flag attacks ever that has spanned many decades and who knows, it could still be going on today, I don't know, is Operation Gladio. It started following World War II and pretty much it was secret armies from NATO and, you know, other neutral countries that would carry out attacks in Europe in order to, you know, keep tensions in the Cold War running high. You know, and keep people there in the constant state of fear and panic. You know, these attacks would be blamed on Soviet terrorists or, you know, whoever the terrorist, the bad guy was of that day. You know, so please research that operation for sure. Operation Gladio. I mean, it, the scope of it's so massive and so many countries and different armies were involved. You know, it's actually like pretty crazy. You know, the most famous false flag attack that's ever been committed. You know, it's just a few years ago there and on 9-11. You know, this is where the CIA, the Mossad, and, you know, other intelligence agencies carried out an attack on the Twin Towers and the Pentagon. You know, they went on to blame Al-Qaeda, which, you know, they helped start and create in the 80s anyways. And then just, this was used to justify the ensuing wars that followed. I mean, everything that's happened since then, I mean, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya, I mean, the list is endless of places that have been attacked and the war on terror and all that crap. You know, I've covered a lot of this in other videos, so I don't want to get too much into it. You know, um, you know, the, the Gulf of Tonkin incident that started the Vietnam War, look that one up, that one's pretty famous too. You know, so what are some reasons that, you know, a government would attack its own citizens? Oh, one more I wanted to mention off, off that started, got almost World War II started was Hitler. 
Hitler burned down his own government building and blamed it on Soviet terrorists or Polish terrorists. I can't remember who he blamed it on. He blamed it on some terrorists, and that was his excuse. Yeah, I think it was for invading Poland, and then World War II started. Classic false flag attack right there. You know, so why would governments carry out false flag attacks on their own people? You know, one that I just mentioned, Hitler, you know, is to gather support for a war that no one wants. Once, you know, these Polish terrorists attacked, you know, the German government buildings, who wouldn't support an attack on Poland? Who wouldn't support, you know, invading Poland? You know, and just like recently with the whole Ottawa shooting that happened, you know, and members of parliament, you know, were all hiding in, in like, uh, you know, the rooms, boarded up rooms and stuff. And now, like, the Harper government wants to introduce these new laws giving CSIS new powers. Which member of parliament isn't going to vote for that, for, for the new laws to come into effect? You know, after they were just basically held hostage by a crazy lone gunman, right? So, you know, to, so to gather support for wars that no one wants, you know, to introduce new laws giving intelligence agencies and the police new powers to arrest people, detain people without a reason, you know, wiretap, surveil people without warrants, you know, just pretty much do anything they want, you know, or they can also, you know, gather support to be reelected. I mean, there's no way in hell George Bush would have got reelected if it wasn't for 9-11 because he was seen as a hero after that, who went after the people who would dare attack our freedoms. You know, another reason is to distract people. You know, so a prime example of that is that 9-11, the day before 9-11, so on September 10th, 2001, Donald Rumsfeld announced there's over $1 trillion missing from the Pentagon. You know, and this, is, this isn't pennies, it's a trillion dollars missing. Did you ever hear about that again? It's pretty convenient timing to make an announcement like that. You know, they make, they do this for profit too. They make a killing. Weapons contracts, you know, they get, how much money does it cost to make one of those bombs that they drop? And then once they drop those bombs, someone's got to come in and rebuild those buildings. You know, who do you think gets those rebuilding contracts? You know, what about resources, oil? Lithium, all kinds of metals in Afghanistan, drugs, I mean, opium. I mean, the opium trade has just skyrocketed after the Americans invaded Afghanistan. You know, and there's so many other reasons, but I think the main one is power. You know, because what is the one thing that those in power fear the most? Losing their power. And they'll do anything, literally anything, to keep it, including killing their own citizens. You know, so they'll use these attacks as a pretext to change laws, arrest their enemies, kill their enemies. And they don't have to say why or how they knew this person was up to that because it's all in the name of national security. It's classified. You know, and then, of course, the people will follow along because, of course, we have to get those evil terrorists who attacked our freedom. You know, so some just want to list a few signs on how to spot a false flag attack so you don't fall for the ruse. You're not made a fool by your government. Believed in, you know, conned in supporting a war against people that did nothing to us. You know, so just some conflicting media reports on the day of and then after. You know, so just an example of what I mean. On 9-11, you know, there's, if you watch live media reports from that day, you know, they're talking about Israelis being arrested on the George Washington Bridge with a van full of explosives never talked about again after that. You know, they talk about bombs going off in the World Trade Center and the witnesses, firefighters talking about bombs going off and taking out each floor. Never hear about that again. Another one is the multiple shooters, you know, so Sandy Hook. If you watch the live media coverage of that, they talk about multiple shooters. But then after that, you never hear about it again. It was just the one crazy guy what just happened in Ottawa too. I mean, they talk about multiple shooters on the on the day that it happened last Wednesday, but when did you ever hear about it again after? It was just the one Michael, whatever his last name is, 
it was just a crazy lone gunman. But on that day of, if you go and read reports or watch live coverage, they're talking about multiple shooters. Why change the story? Where did this multiple shooter story come from and why did it disappear so fast? New laws are ready to go. The Patriot Act was already written before 9-11 even happened. They just needed a reason to implement it. You know, these laws take a long time to write up. And they take even longer to go through and be voted on. But, you know, when something like 9-11 or the Ottawa shooting happened, these laws get fast-tracked, you know. So on the day that the Ottawa shooting happened, you know, conveniently, they were going to talk about giving CSIS new powers. Who's going to vote against that now? You know, and also with the whole media thing is that they know who did it and why within hours or even less. I mean, look at 9-11, Bin Laden, Bin Laden, Bin Laden. They were already talking about Bin Laden on the day of. You know, these investigations take years. I mean, just look at how long it takes them to solve a murder. And that's just a murder. It's just a simple, you know, murder. Even murder investigations take years. And we're talking about mass killings here, multiple shooters and all this, and they already know within a couple hours who did it and why and who we have to go attack. Another way to spot a false flag is the lack of security at the venue that was attacked. 9-11. How did three planes fly around for an hour and a half in the most guarded airspace in the world and not get shot down? It's pretty crazy. Ottawa. You know, a few days before the shooting happened, the BC MLAs were warned of a possible security threat. You know, so they think they're, they're warning people about a possible security threat, yet this guy was able to walk up, shoot somebody at the war memorial, kill a soldier, and then sort of walk, waltz into, you know, parliament and start shooting. Where was all the security? It's crazy. You know, so just what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to get through with this video is just, don't believe them when they tell you, you know, people are attacking us because of our freedom and they hate what we have and all this stuff, you know. If anyone hates anything that we're doing, it's they hate the fact that we're bombing their children. You know, we're bombing their women. We're bombing their hospitals, their infrastructure, their schools. That's what people hate. I mean, they have no means of attacking us. The only people who do and would dare to are our governments. You know, and the governments are the ones that are funding these terrorist groups anyways. Money is unlimited to these people. They own the banks. You know, so when they're trying to con you into supporting these wars, don't. So let's stop supporting these phony wars and start thinking for ourselves. You know, free your mind. Question everything. Don't just believe something you see on the TV. You know, because it's not too late to leave a better world for future generations. But time is running out. We must act now, you know, so question everything you see and hear and spread this information. Talk about it with your friends. So if you have any questions, just, you know, leave a comment or something. Email rotosquestions at outlook.com. I'll make a video on focusing on the Ottawa shooting when I have more time. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.